What's up guys, welcome back to the show, welcome back to another video. In today's video, um, the goal of this is to fully get this thing stripped from the top end. It's to remove this rear trunk, the tail lights, the bumper, the rest of the wiring and everything else in that trunk in terms of like liner and everything. We need to get this thing fully stripped out. In terms of the undercarriage of the car, it really doesn't matter if we get that stuff out of the car today. And honestly, it doesn't even really matter if we get that stuff out soon, mainly because um, we need to get this thing painted. It needs to be a rolling chassis. Once we actually get it back, we're gonna be completely dropping the suspension and everything underneath this car and swapping it out with the beautiful m31 so that also being said guys um we do need to remove this headliner the only route that i found to be able to remove this thing and again i made this harder on myself because i didn't actually open the sunroof sooner um i just didn't want rain to get in here but i mean i just remember we're in california we don't have rain <laughs> we're in a severe drought so i wish i opened that sooner but anywho's to remove this headliner all i pretty much have to do is figure out a way to get out that dome light once i get out that dome light i can pretty much just put like an allen key in there and just twist the motor manually and i can get that sunroof to open if you can get that center to open just a little bit we can get all the screws out to remove the headliner and then uh yeah i mean that will help us get all the wiring situated help us get the trunk out because the trunk wires are all throughout the headliner um like above the headliner and uh yeah it's it, it's all pretty much linked at this point i mean yeah we could remove these rear seats right now but i'm actually using it as cushion right now so i'm um, keeping these in let's just go ahead and focus on this headliner i hope it's as easy as it looks but thank the lord today for good weather I'm not gonna lie guys, uh, that's actually very easy. I just turned the four millimeter Allen key a few times, I believe counterclockwise. And now we have all the screws pretty much exposed. These are the screws we need to remove to be able to drop the headliner. Uh, these look like a like T10s. So let's go ahead and get out all these screws right now. So we can actually drop this headliner and start removing it from the rear end of the car. <laughs> So we got the headliner out. That's actually very easy considering this was a wagon. So we we're able to actually pull it out through the back, which made it so much easier compared to an E90 or E92 or even the Super, for example. So uh, yeah, this is probably the easiest headliner I ever had to pull. I just had to figure out the whole sunroof thing and that was actually pretty easy once I kind of got the idea. But yeah, at this point, guys, we do need to drop the sunroof and I think I'm gonna leave the curtain airbags in there unless it's actually, oh wow, it's actually held on by bolts. Never mind. we're actually removing these two airbags as well. Um, actually, we'll see, we'll see. Actually, I may not need to actually remove those that might be a little bit overkill as long as we disconnect it and there's no wires behind it uh we should be able to just leave those two current airbags in there i just don't see the problem with just leaving those in there but yeah let's just go ahead and just try to drop that sunroof so we can actually get all the wire disconnected and actually get this sunroof rebuilt at probably some kind of like reupholstery shop because i need those two pieces to be in black and that one's just sagging looking super ugly Alright guys, so jumping inside the interior, um, basically is actually a bunch of like metal things that you hold the airbag, like this guy right here. There was a bunch of them that's actually getting in the way uh, for the sunroof. This is a very big sunroof. I don't know if you guys can see, but it goes all the way back there to the front of here. So honestly, if this thing failed, that would suck because you probably have to pick one up locally or otherwise you're paying over like six, seven hundred dollars for shipping. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. Um, also, I wanted to record this for my personal uh, personal documentation as well as as well as show you guys for those of you guys who want to tackle a build like this. Again, and literally everything in this car needs to be pretty much stripped down. Um, I did disconnect the drain ports on this. So we got the drain port over there disconnected, the drain port over there disconnected. There is a wiring harness that goes down there, the one I cut earlier. Um, so now I know why this sunroof wasn't working because that was the power for the sunroof. Um, so uh, yeah, don't cut that wire. <laughs> I just cut it because I assume that uh, we can. We don't even have to deal with the, the headliner right now. But reality is if we wanted to get that trunk out, which I'll show you guys the wiring, you would have to remove the headliner. Plus, if you guys want to redo all this stuff and redo the headliner you, you want to remove the headliner this is just a bunch of 10 millimeters that hold the sunroof on um, but if you guys look over here there's a bunch of things going on right here and this is what i kind of want to record so i can come back to there's a lot of wiring over here that's connected uh, i know this wire loom is going up here and this actually goes into the trunk which is coming right down here so basically it's just a fancy way of coming back to the trunk this doesn't actually attach to the moonroof but you would have to remove the headliner just to get that stuff out of the way um there is some wiring over 
here there's the motor a bunch of other wiring there is two connections for the current airbags that go this way so we do need to pretty much get all that out of the way before we get to drop the center so we don't actually rip any cables and stuff like that so i'm going to sit you guys on time lapse and just try to disconnect as much things as possible um but yeah from my personal documentation the wiring goes like that under over into the trunk probably have to cut this and wiring it into the m3 harness because m3 harness definitely is not going to have that and to come around over here kind of the same deal the connection for the tail lights actually coming from the bottom wiring harness and not the top the top just pretty much uh goes to the antennas the modules and the airbags so noted don't it definitely <laughs> guys i'm not gonna lie oh actually there's a ground right here too so it's good to know there's actual ground right here just in case i don't know where that went but uh yeah well this is gonna be a this is definitely gonna be a project guys definitely Guys, I'm not gonna lie. This isn't fun. <laughs> this thing's heavier than it looks. Oh dear heavens, I don't wanna crack the glass. Guys, that sunroof was no joke. Thankfully, it's finally out. We didn't break anything, thank the Lord. There's actually a bunch of modules that sit on here, a bunch of wiring that sits on here, so that is good. As long as we get power to all of this through this car, this thing should be functional. I mean, worst comes to worst, we won't have a functioning sunroof, but I definitely wanna have that functional, especially considering this car actually comes with a sunroof, which means that the harness of this car, honestly, this car, guys, is the best donor car in the world. Like, it just works. <laughs> I'm so happy. I mean, usually I would like a carbon roof, but because it's a donor car, it's better that it has a sunroof, so we actually have proper wiring to connect to this sunroof so you can actually have all this actually working properly which is super nice it does have a bunch of modules over here another motor back here i'm not really too sure what that motor does or maybe that's actually for the rear window maybe it requires two motors so i have to do some splicing and try to figure out the whole wiring of all that but again thankfully this was all intact we didn't break anything there so as far as the wiring goes right now um just just a little bit of wiring for the fuel tank stuff down there that's not a big deal um but to remove the rest of the wiring that's up there which is honestly a lot of wiring up there um the wiring back here the wiring underneath all this section we need to remove these three parts um i was trying to remove it the other day it's actually such a pain in the butt but guys looking at this car it's so 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 cool because since this is a wagon you have things an e90 doesn't have so that's kind of like a little cool grocery getter um attachment right there actually so sick you literally put your your bags right there so they don't fly everywhere in the trunk i love that i love how there's literally straps everywhere on this car there was like literally two or three more over here um there was some cubbies all over here we have this guy right over here we had a sunshade retractor that comes all the way back here and for those of you guys who didn't know and i didn't know um a fellow youtuber mentioned that this glass actually opens up so if i show you guys what i mean exactly not only does this trunk open and close but this piece right here opens and closes that's so 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 cool and i don't know why they didn't make more wagons or at least a 335 wagon because these wagons are honestly so 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 cool and to have an m3 wagon eventually guys is going to be absolutely insane anyways enough talking to let's go ahead get back into it we need to figure out a way to get the rest of the carpet liner rear seats completely out so i'm gonna go in full time lapse and uh let's just see if we can knock this out
All right, guys, we got a bunch of parts that we're gonna have to reuse. And this is the space we're actually gonna store all of our parts in. So I did clear up a bunch of the stuff. I have a bunch of like parts out on eBay, a bunch of extra boxes. This entire section I just cleared up is gonna be for the E91, at least parts um, from the car itself, because the E90 stuff, as soon as we take it off, we're either gonna put it on the car or sell it on eBay. So we just need to make sure everything for the E91 that we're reusing gets to fit in here. So hopefully with the power of editing, you guys are about to see all this stuff get filled up. Before we actually do that, I do wanna also mention that I got brand new seat buckles. This is something I just wanna show you guys because when it comes to attention to detail, I don't know if you guys know, but for seat buckles, they always end up fading that red section and how nice would it be to have two OEM driver and passenger seat buckles. It's just gonna make the car feel even newer. <laughs> so yeah, I got I picked up these two things. I'm gonna be trying to collect little by little more and more new parts for the interior to make this thing look absolutely brand new in the interior once we complete this build. This dashboard, I actually got it off my E92. It is a perfect black dash. I do eventually want to go with an extended red leather if we do find a red leather interior, but for now, I definitely dig the black a lot more than the gray, and our E90 M3 doesn't even have nav. I prefer the nav. I, I think it's super dope, and I actually have a retrofit, not a CIC, not a CCC. I actually have a retrofit in mind that is going to be insane because I've never seen anybody do it on YouTube, and I'm going to be doing it to this car with my boy Nick. It's going to be a collaboration, and it's going to be super sick. So yes, that is for the E91. These are for the E91. Let's go ahead with the power of editing. Fill this whole section up. Three, two, one. And just like that, guys, we got the rear seats right over here. We have the rear seats also um, behind the headliner. We got the sunroof headliner right here. A bunch of trim pieces, a bunch more trim pieces. This is all from the trunk, seat belts, weather liner. All this stuff we're going to be reusing is right over here. So um, in terms of all these plastics, they are in gray. I do want to eventually get these all in black. I kept these all for part numbers. I will do some research, try to get all the these parts um, probably either from BMW or try to get them used most likely I probably have to get all this from BMW it's probably gonna run me like a G or something like that but how sick would it be when you open up the trunk everything's gonna be in black and looks so 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 good and I'm sure these will actually bring a pretty penny as well just because again of how rare E91 parts are I know this rear sun visor piece alone um, I think in gray goes for 200 in black they go for $500 so uh, I might just skip out on this part until I find a really really good deal I think a BMW they charge over a G for this thing which is kind of crazy and it's just like a rear sun shit. I don't know why um, it's so sophisticated, but that's BMW there for you. So anyways, we got everything over here. Let's go ahead and get back to the car. We do have the trunk just chilling right there. These are the two rear doors. We ended up getting a replacement door for the one that was completely crushed, which is sitting right over here. I'm only keeping this door because it has the rear sunshade portion. So I'm going to be taking that off and just transferring it over to this one so I can have rear sunshades. That's going to be super nice. The front door, honestly, I might just junk it. I might take out the keyless entry and then junk it and just use the two front doors from the M3 just because they're in way better shape. But yeah, guys, this thing... <laughs> is looking more and more stripped as the day comes, which I'm super hyped for. This windshield does definitely needs to come out. So uh, that might be a focus coming up pretty soon here. Um, I do really, really, really want to get the wiring as far back as possible. So I think the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just start working in this section right here. Just pretty much disconnect the seat buckles, disconnect the, the fuel rails, the fuel lines, all that kind of stuff because a bunch of wires going to that stuff. And then once I get all this stuff done, I can move the wires back here and then probably start working on the rear wheel wells because each rear wheel well has some sensors and some connectors probably uh, to uh, the brakes and stuff like that. And then once we actually pull that inside the cabin, we can finish off with the wiring. Yeah, that is a bunch of wiring um, and it's definitely gonna be fun putting it all back in here. But without further ado, let's just go ahead and work on this rear section. And it's kind of crazy that even this rear piece right here is dedicated E91. So I cannot get rid of this. I have to keep everything here. That's what I'm doing. I'm having pretty much boxes and boxes of stuff. And I'm actually separating all the screws because I'm, I'm gonna put them in Ziploc bags so I know what goes to what. Guys, we are back inside the house. This is actually the next morning. Uh, yesterday we worked so, so, so much on the E91 and it's really coming together to the point to where 
I'm actually, I don't know if it's just me, but like as I'm doing things, I'm like, this doesn't look too bad. But then when I get inside, I'm like, oh, this is bad. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things that go behind actually building an E91 M3 I didn't actually factor in. You are literally building a car from the ground up. Like I'm basically stripping the E91 M3, I mean the E91 328 to the bare shell basically. Like literally as if I bought a factory shell and I'm building an M3 literally as if I bought all the parts from BMW. That's why that can get very expensive. That's why getting a donor car is so much better, especially an E90 M3 because a lot of the uh, parts are reusable on the E91. But, but yeah, guys, as soon as I finished that up, I went inside, got a bite, got a little bit dark out there. So I was like, you know what? Let me work on a side project that you guys, you guys know that I have I have a problem. I can't, I, I love perfecting things. And if I show you guys what I mean, you guys are gonna be like, Nor, you got a problem, dude. And I'm gonna be like, I know, I know. I, I don't know what to do. That's why I do YouTube because like I have a problem and uh, some people enjoy looking at my problems. <laughs> So for those of you guys who don't know, I ended up picking up a daily because I don't want to put too much miles on the Supra. Um, so I ended up picking up this daily right here and uh, it came with gray interior. It is a factory M Sport in this beautiful blue. It's an LCI, which is really nice. It does need a lot of paint work and the interior pretty much came in gray. Um, I did get some black door cars. I'm still waiting on aluminum parts. I mean, the car is pretty much like, it, it looks like a clown at this point because we did get the black dash in last night. That was the hardest thing and the main thing I wanted to get done to this car is put in the black dash, put in the black center console. I cut up the carpets from behind. So when it's time, when I actually get two front black carpets, I can just swap those two out without having to remove the dash. And then I actually got in some black carpets back here. So this is like a little um, side project that you guys can see. Um, by the time I'm done with it, it's gonna be beautiful. But as for now, I'm literally just putting together any parts I find from pick and pull or just you know any black parts my friends have i'm literally throwing it in the interior and eventually eventually it's gonna look good but for now it's more like a budget build because i'm not spending any money on this car if i find some black pieces i'm slapping it on this car i picked it up saying it's just a daily it doesn't matter if the interior is nice it doesn't matter if the car is perfect and honestly guys i i just can't live like that like for me it's like this is why i started youtube is because i love building cars and to have a car that's unbuilt and I'm daily driving it, it literally hurts my soul. So like, I'm, I'm gonna be basically working on this car whenever I have no daylight to work on the E91. Um, it's just kind of a side thing. I honestly stayed up a little bit too late. I stayed up till 2 a.m. working on the E90 because I really, really, really wanted to get that dash in. To get the dash in, is so, it's a very involved job. But yeah, anyways, um, that's gonna have to conclude this video. I think in the next video, I'm gonna try to head over to CHP and uh, see um, what's the best way to build this E91 M3. And the reason I'm doing this is because in California, there's a lot of laws and regulations, and I've seen an F80 M3, that uh, F81 M3, get custom built and then crushed in another country because the parts were not verified or it's considered stolen parts or whatever. So when building an E91 M3, you need to verify that you own the car, which I do. I have the title on hand. I already started the registration, and then the parts car, which I own in my name. I bought it for parts, and I got it through a dismantling business. So basically, it's a dismantled vehicle, if you guys know what I mean. So I'll have a bill of sale and all the proper paperwork. So I have proper ownership of both cars, both parts, but I'll get into, but I'll get into all the details of the whole CHP thing. I'm just trying to see the proper way to build this car to actually get it smog legal. I want to go above and beyond and I want to make sure that this thing, if we ever get pulled over in it, we wouldn't get like a state ref for having a V8 engine in there. It would be perfectly legal because everything is state compliant. And it, I mean, I'm saying all this stuff and I'm hoping it's going to happen. And again, again, next video, I'm going to try to go to CHP. I'm going to try to figure that out. So uh, wish me luck guys. I hope he's not going to shoot down my dream. He's like, oh, this is impossible. Possible. You can't do that. You're putting a V8 and a V6 and this, this, and this is never going to be legal. It's never going to be small compliant. I think there is a way because I, I don't want to get into it. I think there's a way. I want I want to make sure there's a way and I want to make this the E91 M3 street legal, like really legal, like actually certified legal with stickers and inspection stuff all over in the hood. That is the goal. That is the goal. So wish me luck, guys. Finally got the car fully stripped. So I don't want to put in anything without knowing more information. So anyways, if you guys are excited for the journey, Make sure to smash the like button. Without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.